So let's look at some of the equipment that you will need. So some hospitals will supply you with the equipment. They will supply you with a certain amount of full enteral syringes. Um, purple enteral syringes are advised uh, because they have a little bit of a wider opening here at the tip where it um, makes it a little bit easier to draw up your own colostrum than when it's a very narrow tip so that it's all hygienic and sterile and usually what you expect um, to get is a few drops only at the start up to perhaps two to five mils it varies uh, greatly between um, mothers first time mothers when you first start out you probably won't be able to remove a lot of colostrum second third time fourth time round or so you may be able to yield more so this is going to be my fifth pre uh, breastfeeding journey and I have previously breastfed my fourth baby till um, his third birthday that was when i was 10 weeks pregnant and then my milk dried up completely but now since the second trimester i have a good supply of colostrum i have started leaking some of the colostrum and i usually always have a good supply of colostrum on day one and day two on average babies consume between 2 and 10 mils of colostrum per feed so you wouldn't be looking at a very huge volume of milk and also um, because if you have um, the colostrum frozen and you you will then need to bring it to hospital you will need um, an insulated sandwich box or lunch uh, bag that you can put some ice blocks in so that you can um, keep the colostrum cool to transport it and bring it in to hospital with you when you go into labor or when you're being induced. Usually hospitals have a uh, designated fridge for colostrum but um, not a freezer so once the colostrum is completely defrosted it needs to be used up within 24 hours so always check with your midwife how many syringes you're supposed to bring in at the beginning or when you go into labor so that you don't bring in all your stash and then it'll have to be discarded because it's all defrosted that would be such a, um, a shame so what will we need now immediately for our first antenatal expression of colostrum so obviously we'll need the breast um, if it's the first time that you're doing it it may help to use um, a warm compress so to warm up your breast this is a um, cherry stone um, pillow it's like a rice pillow really that you can warm up in the microwave and so you can apply some heat to the breast or just a, a a wet flannel or um, a soaked up um, warm wet nappy that you um, wrap around the breast or a heat pad just to widen the ducts and help increase the milk flow you can also use a little bit of coconut oil um, to apply massage to the breast before you go into expressing make sure your hands are clean before you start the expressing process and then you will need your purple enteral syringe or um, a, a spoon or a medicine spoon depending on um, depending on the volumes that you are going to express and um, so it may be easier for you to use a teaspoon um, or a medicine spoon and then draw it up rather than um, drawing up the drops with the syringe because that is sometimes quite challenging once you've collected your colostrum in the syringe so um, as I said you would look at expressing uh, from 37 weeks three to four times a day for five minutes so you ideally do both breasts at the time once you've collected your drops in the syringe you then want to go ahead with a sticky label 
and put that onto the syringe. The sticky label that um, has your name, date of birth, preferable hospital number, and the date and time of expressing the colostrum written on it. So the process on the breast model would be to uh, warm up your breasts for about five minutes or so before you start expressing, then applying a breast massage for about two minutes or so. So you can use your fingertips and massage all around the breast, all the milk ducts, or very, very gently with your knuckles, whichever way you prefer. It's not so important how you do the massage. It's more that the touch actually releases the oxytocin, so you can do that to your breast as well. Um, yeah, so with the massage, oxytocin is released for your milk flow. Then after the massage, you will um, go to the actual expression. And for that, you um, want to find the right spot to position your fingers in. And you can walk with your fingertips down the breast towards the edge of the areola. So where the darker skin meets the lighter skin. And often if you kind of um, compress here or go a little bit deeper with your fingertips it feels a little um, you will feel a change in texture so you will feel um, a texture that feels more like uh, grainy like rice grains or sand grains and that's where you position your thumb and then you make a C shape so you position your thumb there on your four fingers opposite and then you will start compressing and holding that compression and then releasing so you go compress and release compress and release and unlike with mature milk where you will see eventually uh, drips and sprays of milk because colostrum is so oily it seeps up slowly and initially you will only get a few drops if you if you can't get um, anything out um, then you may need to reposition your fingers slightly forwards or slightly back. Not too close to the nipple because what you don't want is to compress the nipple or slide on the nipple because that could cause damage or bruising. And like later on when baby breastfeeds, baby needs to be attached deeply to the breast rather than just the nipple for milk transfer. So you're unlikely to get anything out by just squeezing the nipple and it will just rather make the nipple very sore and you may feel, um, and you could even cause nipple damage. And that's the other risk, you don't want to um, cause any antenatal or breast inflammation such as mastitis. So make sure your fingers are clean and that you don't cause yourself breast damage because sometimes we're so eager to get milk out that we squeeze too hard. If the compress release technique in the C shape hold with your fingers is not working for you, you may want to press back towards the chest wall and then roll down, not slide towards the nipple. So just compress towards the chest wall and roll down. And that may get the milk out for you. And sometimes um, the C-shape hold does not work for some moms, then you can rotate your fingers and um, have your fingers in a U-shape and do the same either at the edge of the area where you compress and release, or you kind of press towards the chest wall and then roll into the tissue to compress the milk ducts rather than sliding and squeezing the nipple. So if you have watched the tutorial in the membership program, you will know that I have just expressed just over uh, four milliliters of colostrum. It's really thick yellow colostrum. I'm very happy with the amount for the first expression. I'm now going to lay, put the label, the sticky label onto um, the syringe. I've closed it up so it's hygienic and I'm going to put it into a Tupperware box that I have sterilized 
and um, we'll put it in the freezer and um, then it's ready to be taken to hospital when I go into labor. So yeah, thank you for joining me today. I hope you found this video helpful and that it gave you a little bit more information and background information about antenatal hand expressing of colostrum and why you may benefit or may not benefit from antenatal hand expression and whether it is suitable for your own individual circumstances. Always check with your healthcare provider. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to my channel for more. Uh, let me know in the comments below what type of videos you would like to see in the future. Hopefully once baby has arrived, I will be able to do um, more um, tutorials in my membership program as well when baby's actually feeding and pumping tutorials. So do consider uh, joining the membership program as well. And otherwise, until next time, I hope your breastfeeding journey starts well or is going well. See you next time. Bye.